Hey everybody, Dan with ADA Trance here again. I'm going to be doing another quick tutorial. Um, this one's going to be a little bit more technically oriented for kind of like a tip slash trick in Ableton itself. Um, there's a, kind of a cool routing thing that you can do uh, with instrument racks, drum racks, and audio effects racks. So what we're going to try and do here is essentially use uh, macro controls so that we can layer an instrument on top of another instrument and simultaneously use macro controls to adjust the instrument parameters and adjust effects parameters. So what I've done here is just create a simple MIDI channel with a very basic MIDI pattern. And what I'm going to go ahead and do now is come in here and add a drum rack to it. I'm going to expand this out and I'm going to show the return tracks. Now what I'm going to do in the devices uh, section is drop in an instrument rack. And then down here in the return section, I'm going to drop in the audio effects rack. What I'm going to do now is actually change the uh, input uh, of this guy. And uh, what I need to do for that is show the input, uh, the input output section. And then on receive, I'm going to scroll all the way up and select all notes. Otherwise, um, the drum rack is designed to just play kind of like a drum pad. But this is going to make uh, any note that's being played into the drum rack actually go into the instrument rack. Uh, so now that we've got that routing set up, we're going to come back here and I'm just going to drop in two quick instances of uh, FM8 here just to kind of show uh, how this works. My computer's lagging for just a second. Here we go. So we've got two instances of FM8 and uh, let me go ahead and actually just change this guy. We'll just, uh, for, the, for the fun of it, make, uh, make it a quick saw wave or something like that, just so it's a little bit different. And now here's uh, the interesting part. Um, now that we've got these layered, uh, first of all, we'll just play this really quick so you can see that it actually works. Okay. So all the MIDI is coming in here, feeding through here and going into both of the synths, okay? Now, all you need to do is start dropping in audio effects here into the audio effect rack. So I'm gonna come over, I'm gonna drop in uh, something like, why don't we just do a simple delay here? I'm gonna change it just for funsies to a 3.5. Obviously you wanna make it fully wet. Let's give it some feedback. Um, just to create an effect. Oh, whoops. Uh, you also need to uh, come to the drum rack and um, show the sends. That way you can change the send volume. So we're going to send 100% into the audio effect rack. Um, from here it'll work. Okay, now you might be wondering, in, uh, if you kind of think back to some of my other tutorials, what happens when you've got the situation where you need a filter in the audio chain, however the filter is supposed to come before things like delay, otherwise it starts sounding bad when you, when you put the filter at the end of the chain instead of the beginning of it. Um, well, fortunately, all we need to do is go in here to the uh, auto filter and actually drop it within the drum rack portion. Um, after the chain in the, sorry, let me um, go back to the instrument rack. We're going to drop it in the chain after the instrument rack, okay, within the drum rack. So I know it's a little difficult to see, but I dropped it in here right after See how the audio, audio uh, sorry, the auto filter is actually in uh, the chain after these instruments. It's not within the chain here. So now the auto filter goes away because it's within the instrument rack chain. I'm moving it out into the uh, drum rack chain. And the audio, the audio comes, uh, processes all the instruments here and then immediately goes to the auto filter before going to the send return section of the drum rack. This is the key here. 
So now what happens is you'll hear what actually happens, how the filter is before the, the delay in this chain with this method. And that is how you do epic routing. Now, why does this make a difference? Well, this is where it gets fun. I come in here to the map mode and I can go macro one. And now that these are stacked, I can use macro one in the drum rack to actually automate everything, every single thing, every single thing in the chain, including the auto filter, okay? Everything is mappable here. And so what I can do is simply uh, um, add in maybe this guy. And then I'll add in this guy. Um, so now what, we, what we've done is automated two parameters, both the macro one of the instrument rack and the send of the instrument rack within this drum rack. I know this is starting to get a little confusing, um, but just take your time with this to understand what's going on. And so I can basically increase the delay, and then what I can come over here and do is come into the instrument rack, and I can, let's say, modify uh, the volume, and we'll flip this. So now you'll see the volume over here invert. So I drag it down, the volume goes up, the delay, uh, or, sorry, volume goes down, delay goes down. And on top of that, I can now even come over to the filter and I can automate the filter. This is really awesome. This is so awesome. So now the filter is also automated. So uh, I'm just gonna shrink this down so we can see. Notice the filter coming down. So <laughs> here's the effect that we get. Uh, hopefully you can kind of intuit what you can do from here. Anyways, super pro, tr uh, tip. Uh, enjoy. <laughs>